Hey everybody, Nick here, and we are here on the Davis Park Church of Christ YouTube channel. It is Monday night. I'm glad you are here, and uh, we do this every Monday night, every Thursday night, in an effort to stay connected, to devote ourselves to God, to His Word, and to prayer. I am sure others are going to be going along as we come along, and so uh, we're going to be we're going to start in a number of passages in the Old Testament, jump to the New Testament, but we're talking about, did you hear what the Pope said? It's been a little over a week ago, uh, 10 days maybe. Uh, we're going to talk about what the Pope said, and this leans back into some stuff we talked about earlier this year. You're not going to want to miss it. Again, let's worship our God. I'll be back in just a second. Lord, the people praise you. Lord, the people praise you. Lift you up and praise you. Lift you up and praise you. Because you are the Holy One. You are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. Lord, the people love you. Lord, the people love you. They place nobody above you. Place nobody above you. down here in the little corner here because I've got pulled up here um, the video from the folks over at Protestia of the Pope. He was at a, uh, it was a, a gathering of those who are irreligious. Mostly you can probably see here in the 
background here. These are young people, uh, students, adolescents. And what the Pope's going to say here, well, well let's, let's just let him explain in his own words and, and see what he says. Uh, this should be coming through here. Yes, it's okay to discuss and to... Tutte le religioni sono un cammino per arrivare a Dio. Because every religion is a way to arrive at God. Sono, dirò una comparazione, sono come diverse lingue, diverse idiomi per arrivare lì. Sort of a comparison, an example would be they're sort of like different languages in order to arrive at God. Ma Dio è Dio per tutti. But God is, is God for all. E come Dio è Dio per tutti, noi siamo tutti figli di Dio. And if God is God for all, then we're all sons and daughters of God. Ma il mio Dio è più importante del tuo. But my God is more important than your God. È vero quello? Is that true? C'è un solo Dio lì. E noi sono idiomi, cammino, lingue per arrivare a Dio. There's only one God and each of us is a language, so to speak, in order to uh, arrive at God. Qualcuno è schi, qualcuno è musulmano. Qualcuno Muslim, indi, qualcuno cristiano, Indo, sono diversi cammini. There, there are different paths. Understood? <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. <clears throat> so, and why wouldn't you? Why, if, if you're not a religious person, if you are um, outside of the bounds of God, why, why wouldn't you applaud such a, a hand-patting answer? Okay, there, there, yeah. yeah. It's okay. You, you heard a number of different canards there. Number one, religions are all different roads up the mountain to God. Okay, uh, Every religion is just a different pathway to God. It's like language, you know, different languages to, to communicate about God or what have you. And then the canard, we're all sons and daughters of God, which simply is not the case. Uh, God has a family. Those who bow the knee to King Jesus enter into this family. If you do not acknowledge the Son, you do not have the Father. And you may be, and, and indeed, we all are the creation of God. And so in that regard, we are all creatures and we all owe God honor and thanksgiving. We're not all sons and daughters of God. We are comprised of those who are part of the family and those who are outside of the family of God. Those who are not believers. Uh, and, and so, again, why, of course you would, you would applaud such an enlightened and inclusive answer. And that's the thing. Because I don't think Francis is a full-blown universalist. The universalist says, uh, hey, everyone's going to make it. Um, everyone's going to go to heaven, regardless of how you live down here, regardless of what you said about Jesus, whether or not you acknowledged him as Lord and Savior or not. Uh, everybody gets their ticket punched, if not in this life, then in the next life. There are even strains of universalism like uh, origin. Um from Alexander. There's, there's a reason he's not Saint Origen, and it's because of his universalist tendencies where he even thought like the devil would be saved eventually. Um, I don't know that Francis goes that far, but he is certainly an inclusivist, where even if you have just a faith move in the direction of God, that, that counts, right? God weighs that. So even like a, um, like a God-fearing Muslim who does not acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God, Allah has no Son, who denies the crucifixion, thereby denying the resurrection, and basically rewriting the entire historical Jesus because of their faith in Allah, Francis says, hey, you're good. Um, God, God's family is, is much more inclusive, apparently, than the Catholic Church. By the way, yeah, I think just about every pope prior to Pope Francis would have said otherwise. 
now. Now, because I can hear my Catholic friends in the back shouting out, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He wasn't speaking ex cathedra. This was not an authoritative, dogmatic definition of the faith. To which I say, you are right, my friend. However, when you get together with all your theological buddies, you get together with all your cardinals and all that, of course you're going to craft a statement in such a way that, you know, there, there's, there's wiggle room there. Okay? Your Pope, uh, John Paul, he would do this. He would throw out some red meat for the left wing and throw out some right, red, red meat for the right wing. Right wing, left wing, left wing, right wing. Year after year, he did that. Now you got Francis, and he's, well, it's a little embarrassing because for years and years you've been saying, we have a Pope. We come home to Rome, right? I talked about earlier this, this year, back in January, go back and find those tapes in the archive about the infallibility of the church. And I broke it down. This, this is what our Catholic friends, you have exchanged the infallible rule of faith and doctrine, which are the scriptures, for the infallibility of the church. The problem is, when you talk to children, that's when you really find out what you believe. It really is. And I know they, that there was a much more refined and cleaned up transcript translating what Francis said that was released. But I'm telling you that on-the-fly stuff right there, where you got an interpreter in the moment interpreting what is being said, for the Pope to admit that every religion is a way to arrive at God. They're like different languages to arrive at God. And he's talking to children. That speaks volumes about where Francis is. This is supposed to be, he is the de facto head of the largest church on the planet, right? And here he is saying, yeah, but... I know we've been pretty dogmatic and definitional about this. And quite frankly, if Francis had been alive back in the 16th century, he probably would have been burned at the stake as a heretic for some of these views. But, 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 but. We know better now. And so we know there are many roads to God, different languages to arrive at God. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a, a much broader road here than we had previously thought. So that's what the Pope said. What does the Scripture say? Because that's really what we're after, right? We want to know what God has said. Because quite frankly, we do not believe that uh, the Pope is the Vicar of Christ here on earth. We do not believe that he is the uh, Vox Humana of the Deity. Uh, we believe that uh, the Pope, like the rest of us, needs to repent, abandon his um, perceived ideas of grandeur and recognize with humility that um, Christ has not given up his role as the one true soul mediator between God and men. You need to abandon all the Mariolatry. Uh, she is not a co-redemptrix. She was certainly blessed by God. But to add more to it than that is simply going too far. Hero Israel. Yahweh our God, Yahweh is one. Only one God. So Allah is not the one true and only God. The gods of Mormonism are not the true gods. Uh, the God of Buddhism, the God of fill in the blank. There's only one true and only God, and that is Yahweh God, God of the Old and New Testament scriptures. Isaiah 45, 5, I am Yahweh, there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. That's pretty straightforward there. Um, I equip you, though you do not know me. Isaiah 46, 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, there is no other. I am God, there is none like me. And this pretty well uh, dismantles this idea of um, multiple ways to God. 
There's only one God, and he's only revealed one way to him. And it is not whatever we feel like, whatever we think, whatever others have invented. Uh, it is not through various and sundry mediators, uh, both human and angelic. Uh, it is strictly through the one person of Christ. Why? John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Uh, we find out in a few verses, in verse 14, the Word became flesh, dwelt among us. This is Jesus Christ in human history. He is the Word, and He is 100% fully God. And so, He became what He wasn't, while never ceasing to be what He always was. He assumes human flesh, takes it upon Himself, a body of flesh, a body you prepared for me, as the psalmist had said. And um, while a death needed to take place, and it is very, a very human thing for us to die, only God could take the wrath of God and survive. And so that's why God took on flesh, dwelt among us, and died the death that was necessary for us on the cross that we might live for him. There is only one way to the one true and only God. Jesus said to, them, said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Sorry, Francis, you got it wrong. Um, yeah, that's why, again, the Pope needs to repent. All those within Catholicism need to repent uh, and recognize that you are following a, uh, you are following a fallible guide. Uh, the, the church... Catholic Church is not infallible. I, I've referenced before uh, Salmon's book, The Infallibility of the, Ch of the Church. It's available. It's public domain now because it's a, an older book. He's got a chapter in there. I believe it's chapter 14 on the blunders of the supposed infallible guide. And it's just, it's one blunder after another blunder. And you want a blunder? How about what we just heard from the Pope right now, that Every religion is a, is a way to arrive at God. No, it's not. No, it's not. If you follow the religion of Islam, Allah cannot save you. He's not the one true and only God. If you follow the gods of Mormonism, you are not going to arrive at the one true and only God. You're going to arrive at an idol. And indeed, the idol, guess what? It, it's me. I'm the idol in the Mormon religion because I am seeking to attain godhood by working my way to that. Um, so, all other religions do not take, they do not end up at the top of the mountain. You're going to end off in outer Slobobia, and really outer darkness, if you follow any other religion, except the one true and only Christian faith, as revealed in the scriptures, by the Holy Spirit, through the apostles and the prophets. Following Jesus, you can't go wrong. No one comes to the Father except through Him. Through you got to go through Jesus. You have to go, and it's not just any Jesus. It's not the Jesus of Mormonism. It's not the Jesus of Jehovah's Witnesses. It's not the Jesus as presented in the Quran. It is the Jesus the apostles knew. The Jesus who is revealed in the Scriptures. Both Old and New Testament, by the way. Because the Old Testament is Jesus saying, excuse me, the Old Testament is God saying, He's coming, He's coming. The New Testament is saying, He came, He came. No one comes to the Father. No one is able to approach God, the one true only God, except through Jesus Christ. And if anyone is qualified to tell us this, it is Jesus because, again, the Word was God. There is salvation in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. What name is that? Is, is it the name of Muhammad? Is it the name of Joseph Smith? Is, the, is it the name of Buddha? No. It is the name of Jesus. Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. So all these other religions are not going to end up saving anybody. All they can do is damn. All they can do is further heap up condemnation. Salvation is only found in Jesus Christ, period, full stop. 
Jesus said it. The apostles say it. There is no other name. No other name. There's no, certainly not Francis' name. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5, there is one God. That's where we started way back in Deuteronomy, right? Notice, there is one mediator. Uh, Mary is not a mediator. She is not a mediatrix. She is not the neck that turns the head. Uh, and, and so all of the Mariolatry and Catholicism needs to be abandoned. There's only one mediator. His name is Jesus. There's one mediator between God and men. It is not the woman Mary, the mother of Jesus. The one mediator is the man, Christ Jesus. And here's why. Verse 6, Mary didn't die on a cross for you. Buddha didn't give his life as a ransom. Joseph Smith, oh, good gracious. The guy was a charlatan, a fraud, and he... He did not die a martyr's death. Martyrs don't shoot back. And, and Joseph Smith died with, uh, with cold steel in him because he was firing back. Maybe it was hot lead. but um, The Jesus of Jehovah's Witnesses cannot save. Because he's not fully God. Again, only God can take the wrath of God and survive. Jesus gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. This is why Jesus is that one mediator between God and humans. It's because of who he is, Christ Jesus, it's because of what he did as the ransom. So, um, Net, net, what do we take away? Uh, well, once again, we see another blunder from Rome. Another blunder of the alleged infallible church. We see that Pope Francis, who, he, listen, he ought to know his book. He ought to know the scriptures. He ought to know better. And he could not be more wrong. And I'm listen, you heard him, I'm sure... Um, that was said with all the sincerity in the world. But he is sincerely wrong. And he is, he is misleading every last one of those young people. What did they hear? They did not hear the gospel. They, they didn't hear about uh, a God who sent his son into the world to die for sinners. And oh, by the way, every last one of you has offended a holy God because you have lived in such a way that you have not given God the honor and the thanksgiving that is due Him, just by virtue of the fact that you live in His world. Not to mention, uh, you ever told a lie? You ever harbored anger in your heart? Jesus said that's tantamount to murder. You ever had a lustful thought? You are a lying, murderous, adulterous generation. Repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there is salvation in no other name. What they heard was a false sense of hope, which is really no hope at all. You're okay, right where you are. Just keep doing what you're doing. God, he's going to honor that in the long run. No, no, there's, there is no gospel in that. My friends who are part of the Catholic Church um, flee from that sinking ship. Years ago, when uh, Francis first came into the papacy, and, and there were rumblings way back then, and, and they've only grown stronger as, as time has gone by. Uh, concerning his stance on liberation theology, I was asked about liberation theology just, just last week. It's real big in, in South America, and uh, where's the current pope from? He's from South America. He has drunk deeply from the well of liberation theology. And it's being reflected in a number of the statements that he's made. I know, they're not dogmatic definitions of the faith as he speaks ex cathedra. But again, what you say in a teaching role in your teaching capacity, especially in this context where you're talking to young people, that's a revelation of the heart. Uh, so, uh, 
folks within the Catholic Church. Uh, the, the call goes out to you. Flee from uh, that fallible guide to Christ. Flee from Rome that, that is not giving you true hope from a true gospel. But flee to uh, the scriptures as the sole infallible rule of faith and doctrine. Flee to Christ Jesus and uh, find your place in the true church. Well, and by the way, brothers and sisters, we've got a potent message. I hope you see that. We do want to spend just a little bit of time in prayer this evening, so right where you are, I want you to invite the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to come to be with you. And as we draw near to God, God draws near to us. <clears throat> Lord God, we thank you for your word, which is able to tell us the truth. Uh, we are grateful for the ability to take up your word and to read and to see with clarity the, the revelation that you have given we pray that we would seek to champion the one true and only Savior of humanity, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. That He is the only hope for humanity. And that there really is salvation found in the world. We want to lift up to you those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We lift up Shirley Poulter and her family, for the Magana family, for Lisa's family. As these families walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we pray that you would buoy their spirits, lift their heads, Remind them of your abiding presence. Comfort them, and may we as your church likewise seek to grant comfort as we can. For Wayne Bussey, we pray that you speed him along to full recovery following the replacement of his pacemaker. We have uh, several other uh, requests that are here before us. We pray for this uh, little baby that was born to the whites, that was born premature. We pray that you strengthen this child uh, and that... Uh, not only would they grow up to be healthy and strong, but that you would draw this child to yourself by your grace. For Jay, we pray concerning those test results that they would be beneficial. We pray that Susan Brown's vertigo clears up. For uh, Menendry, we pray that uh, Tori Kelly's friend is able to make a full recovery following the fall and broken back. I hear that our brother Gordon Day is doing a little better than he was a week ago. We pray that you continue to strengthen him. For Vicky Laguna, we pray that you clear up the pericarditis. For Tammy Russell, we ask that uh, you grant uh, healing concerning the health issues and grant Holy Spirit wisdom concerning decisions to be made. And indeed, we continue to pray for those who need to make good decisions, uh, that you would grant them wisdom, so that they would choose to make the appropriate decision. We pray for Brother Mike as he awaits HUD approval. We pray that uh, you would grant him an answer to that uh, quickly and swiftly. Um, Lord, there are many who have health issues that are here before us. We pray that you as the God of health would grant healing as you deem fit. For those who are struggling with mental health concerns, we pray that you give them good mental health, mental strength. Uh, for those who are traveling, we pray that you grant them traveling mercies. For those who need to be brought back near to you, we pray that uh, you would draw them to yourself by your grace. We have many who are suffering from cancer at this time that we want to pray for. We lift them up to you by name. Charlie Myers, John Hatter, Chris Shook, Dan Ribeiro, Dwight McBride, Desi, Lynn Brocco, Ruben Tostado, Ian, Margie Hawkins, Nancy, Phil, Jeff House, Paul, Chris, Robert Wooten, Wendy, Yvonne Wheeler, Cindy Lindsay, Renee, Dale Christensen, Cecilia, Susan, Ron, Treadway, and Bill Hunt. We pray that where there are doubts, you grant faith. Where there is despair, you grant hope. Where there is sorrow, you grant joy. And that you would grant healing according to your sovereign power as you see fit. So good to know that you care for us, you love us with an incredible love. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Abba, we belong to you. We are our beloved. His desire is for us. 
Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> as it was in the beginning, as now, and evermore shall be. We pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, uh, thanks for joining me this evening. I know there's a lot you can be doing on a Monday night, like watching uh, Monday Night Football. <laughs> Uh, but I'm glad you chose to spend just a little bit of time with me tonight. Um, Buddy will not be with you this Thursday. It's me. That's right. Two for this week. <laughs> I'll be with you not only tonight, I've been with you tonight, but I'll be with you on Thursday as well. Um, and so, um, yeah, we'll talk about some stuff then. Wednesday night, come on down. Midweek Bible study. Bible classes for all ages then, 7 o'clock at the building, or catch the replay online at the Davis Park Church of Christ YouTube channel. Um, feel like there was something else, but uh, tree taculars around the corner, just a reminder about that, special contribution for the Cambodia Christian Ministries, that's coming up October 6th, October 2nd, I forgot to mention this yesterday, but October 2nd, if you have some time in the afternoon around 2, 2.30, Come on down to the, the park, Davis Park. We're going to be hanging out there, and uh, hopefully some of the kids from the club are going to come by. And we'll just chat with them a little bit, uh, hopefully build a relationship, uh, maybe pass out some goodies for the kids. But uh, at any rate, that will be going on October 2nd, Wednesday afternoon, as soon as the kids get out of school. They'll just hopefully come right over. Um, yeah, all right, that's going to do it for me. Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious. And the God richly bless you, my beloved siblings. Until next time, have a good evening. God bless.